fish. So far, we've covered humans, okay? The locomotion and skeletal system of human beings. So right now, we're going to look into a fish's locomotion and skeletal system, okay? Mainly for a fish. What is actually supporting a fish to move are the fish's fins, okay? So look at my cursor. The tail over here, you can either call this tail or caudal fin, okay? So for caudal fin, there are two functions, okay? There's just one function, okay? The main function is to flip left and right, okay? Why is it flipping left and right? Is to provide forward thrust. This is what allows the fish to swim forward, okay? Then the top and the bottom, the two main fins that we know, okay? This is called dorsal and this is called ventral, okay? Dorsal and ventral fin, the functions of dorsal and ventral fin is to actually prevent yawing. Y-A-W-I-N-G, yawing and rolling, okay? So yawing meaning, okay, a fish, okay, guys, if you guys have been swimming before, do you know you can't actually swim in a straight line? Most of human beings or most of any forms of animals swimming in a straight line will be a problem, okay? The problem is because we do not have fin support we do not have such support of a fish okay whatever support a fish is having humans don't have it okay we will literally go a bit to the left all right even though our movement looks straight we are actually not moving straight okay i will literally put it in an easier way called marble movement okay and rolling is let's say when a fish's fin is damaged what's going to happen over there when a fish's fin is damaged a fish literally goes upside down or it will turn sideways okay it wouldn't be able to control itself to be in a upright position the reason why is because the dorsal and the ventral fin is literally not helping the fish to stay straight okay next right in front of the dorsal fin you have a small fin over here this particular fin is known as pelvic fin okay guys whatever i'm actually pointing out over here guys I've given you the points to write down over here, okay? So, whatever I'm saying, listen to whatever I'm saying properly and take notes, okay? Caudal fin literally flips left and right. The second point is to provide forward thrust. Dorsal and ventral fin, it provides two functions. Number one is to prevent yawing and number two is to prevent rolling. Yawing is marble movement and rolling is, you guys know, like 360 degrees rolling, okay? Next, your pelvic fin. Pelvic fin prevents the, fi prevents the fish from pitching, okay? Pitching has a definition of itself, okay? Pitching is the movement of an object towards the lower pressure area, okay? Let's say when you guys enter the water, go down all the way, hold your breath. Can you stay underwater for a very long time? You will somehow start coming up to the surface because the pressure up there is lower. As an object, you are moving towards the lower pressure area. That is what pitching means. But for a fish, it can stay its entire life underwater. How is that possible? Because it has a fin that is actually prevent pitching. And the last one over here. This is pectoral fin. One of the most important fin in the fish. Okay. The first function of pectoral fin is to provide additional thrust, okay? To provide additional thrust or to provide additional forward thrust, that's what I would say, okay? Tail is literally for a fish to swim, okay? But let's say when a bigger fish is chasing this fish, what do you think this fish is going to do? It has to swim faster. And what is actually helping this fish to swim faster is the pectoral fin. The, pe the pectoral fin is providing additional forward thrust. That's number one. The second function, it helps the fish to turn left and right. A fish is swimming straight all the way. No, it can turn left, it can turn right. What is actually helping the fish to do this? It is the pectoral fin. Number three, the fish will okay sorry number three in case of emergency situation okay not necessarily a big fish eh? let's say a fish is actually about to migrate from one place to another okay let's say a fish is racing towards food okay to escape from danger in the sense this fin will come in handy okay 
and one last thing over here guys a lot of you wouldn't know this fishes can swim backwards what is actually helping the fish to swim backwards is the pectoral fin without the pectoral fin i'm so sorry the fish cannot swim backwards okay so i'm going to go through all of this again number one caudal fin what is caudal fin doing caudal fin is literally providing forward thrust by flipping left and right next your dorsal and your ventral fin dorsal and ventral fin is prevent yawing and prevent rolling yawing is marble movement and rolling is you guys know 360 degrees movement next over here i mean sorry over here you have your pelvic fin pelvic fin prevents pitching pitching is the movement of an object towards the lower pressured area and finally you have your pectoral fin there are three functions i would put two functions together number one to escape from danger how is it escaping from danger by providing additional forward thrust number two helps the fish to turn left and right and number three would be helps the fish to swim backwards okay so now guys over here let's say human beings with gills do you think they will be able to survive underwater for a very long time do you think it's possible the actual answer is no even with gills human beings wouldn't be able to live underwater for a very very long time okay because of these five adaptations that i'm supposed to talk about i'm going to talk about okay number one streamlined body a fish's head can literally break water friction humans head they can't do that that's why humans we always put our hands in front most of the time while swimming we have to break the water friction we are using our hands to push the water behind but for a fish the face's shape or the body's shape itself is actually breaking the water friction okay humans use this particular size i mean use this particular shape to build what they use this particular shape to build boats okay number 2 presence of antagonistic muscles in the tail guys you guys should know this what is the definition of antagonistic muscles a pair of muscles when one contracts the other relaxes to allow movement so the muscle that i'm talking about over here is known as myotome m y o t o m e so that is the first point you're supposed to write okay myotome myotome are the antagonistic muscles present in a fish number 2 myotome helps the fish to flip its tail left and right okay the tail flips left and right that is your second point the first point is myotome the second point helps the tail to flip left and right why is the tail flipping left and right guys you guys should know this because i repeated this a few times already okay it provides forward thrust next number 3 scale faces backwards kalau lu orang pernah pergi pasar okay what happens is if you guys have been to the market what actually happens here is they will literally take the remove the scale of the fish if you see when they are removing the scale they will always Uh, how 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 do i say this they always use one particular tool to actually remove the scale from the back to the front from the tail all the way in front that's how they do it okay so the reason why is because the scales are all facing backwards what happens if the scales scales face forward okay the hydrostatic pressure is going to kill the fish Okay, when the fish is swimming forward, all the resistance, all the hydrostatic pressure on the fish's body can actually tear the fish's body apart. Okay, that is one of the reasons the scales are facing backwards. Okay, prevent hydrostatic pressure on the body. Number two, why why do you think the scales are facing backwards? Okay, the scales are facing backwards to reduce the tension on the fish's body. Okay. and number 3 protects the fish's internal lying body okay number 3 presence of air sac kalau lu orang ambil satu ikan ambil satu ayam you cut both open which one is going to have a lot of space inside 
technically a fish will have a lot of space inside. The reason why is because it has air sac inside the body. This air sac is what allows the fish to float easily in the body. Number one, provides a buoyant force for the fish to float in the water. Number two, helps the fish to move in the water easily. Okay. And the last one, mucus overscale. Kalau lu orang pernah hold ikan, if you guys go to the market and hold a fish, you guys will understand that fish has a very slimy body. The reason why fish has a very slimy body is to reduce the water tension affecting or the water tension that is hitting the fish's body. Understand? So, five reasons why fishes can live underwater is because number one, streamlined body which reduces water tension. Number two, presence of antagonistic muscle in the tail. The muscle is known as myotome. It flips left and right which provides a forward thrust. Number three, scale faces backwards. Reduces water tension on the fish's body. Protects the fish's body internal lying body and also reduces the hydrostatic pressure of water. Number four, presence of air sac. Okay, presence of air sac provides buoyant force or provides buoyant force for fish to float and it also helps the fish to move fast in the body, in the water. And finally, mucus overscale provides the fish's underlying body. Okay, guys, antagonistic muscles. The myotome. I think you guys have seen this particular shape in a fish. Eh? So, it's quite straightforward. Myotome ada empat. One, two, three, four. But I'll divide it into left-hand side myotome and right-hand side myotome. If a fish is about to, look at the diagrams up here. If a fish is about to turn right, the right-hand side muscles will contract and the left-hand side muscles will relax. If the fish is about to turn left, the left-hand side muscles will contract and the right-hand side muscles will relax. It's quite straightforward. Antagonistic muscles, the function is still the same. Even though we are dealing with four muscles over here, they still act in a pair. Okay? Two muscles are contracting while the other two are relaxing at the same time. The definition still stands the same. Okay?